It comes down to this. As an engineer who's run a lot of these tests and simulation, what would I recommend for most individuals to shoot? All right, welcome back to the archery education series. It's been a little bit, I apologize for that. Got a lot of stuff going on right now. Wife just had uh, surgery, so she's trying to recover from that and I've got three kids that I'm managing. Today's video is gonna be a little bit of a wrap up of what we've talked about so far, as well as some recommendations that I would make. So let's get into it. We started this series off by talking about kinetic energy, momentum at the launch conditions. So that means the arrow right as it comes out of the bow. And what we discovered is that assuming the efficiency of your bow doesn't change, the energy of the arrow is not dependent upon anything of the arrow itself. It's just from your bow. That means you can shoot a 700 grain arrow or a 300 grain arrow and the kinetic energy of that arrow as it leaves your bow should be the same. This is assuming the efficiency of your bow doesn't change. And that's what we saw in the test that I did. My bow's efficiency didn't really change. There was very little difference in energy from the light arrow to the heavy arrow. From then we tried to figure out well, what happens downrange. In order to do this, we developed a ballistics calculator and the app for that will be released soon. I hope everyone enjoys that. From those calculations that we did, we discovered that arrow mass is one of the biggest properties that helps an arrow maintain or retain its energy, momentum, etc., as it goes downrange. And this is kind of to be expected. The drag on that arrow is not as great because the velocity it launches less. And the arrow itself, because it weighs more, takes a greater force to slow down. So it maintains its energy downrange. After that point, we tried to say, well, what would happen at the target? This is mainly an education towards bow hunting because the next video we looked at, penetration. In that video I said, the flight of the arrow has gotta be one of the most important factors because the arrow needs to hit square to the target. An untuned shaft hitting at any angle other than perpendicular to its flight path is gonna lose a tremendous amount of energy and momentum towards the direction of penetration. We looked at the Poncelet model, which is a very well-known formula from a penetration standpoint when we're trying to determine what kind of projectile is needed to penetrate certain mediums and that could be dirt concrete animals etc and from this we realize that again mass plays a part but more importantly arrow stiffness broadhead tight and the front column of the arrow become critical this is where foc comes in Assuming both arrows, a light and a heavy arrow, or a high FOC and a lower FOC arrow, hit perfectly plumb to the target, the limiting factors of penetration for that arrow is, will it bend or buckle as it hits the target? Turns out the velocity at which it hits the target is very detrimental because this increases the initial force that that arrow is gonna experience. So even if all things were equal, the faster traveling arrow, has a greater initial force when it hits the animal, which tends to cause more buckling or shaft failure where the arrow is bending, which loses a lot of its energy and doesn't go towards penetration. We went a little bit more specific on that next video. We talked about FOC, how this affects our flight of an arrow, improvements that it can have, as well as limiting that shaft length or that column length at the front of an arrow, which would help reduce arrow failure or buckling as it hits a target, specifically an animal. From here, we kind of explored a couple topics that are a little less well known. We talked about range forgiveness, animals moving, and wind drift. So from all of this, as an engineer who's run a lot of these tests and simulation, what would I recommend for most individuals to shoot? This of course, should always be dependent upon the quarry or target you're chasing. If you don't need excessive penetration, then use a lighter arrow. If you're concerned about the animal moving more than your ability to penetrate, or maybe your overall range that's needed, let's say if you're hunting antelope in the open, open plains where your shot distance is probably one of your biggest factors, consider that in your selection of arrow to use. 
But generally speaking, if I was going to select an arrow that I would consider a well-rounded arrow for, let's say, any game, maybe not including some of the largest African game, this would be my suggestion. First would be prioritize arrow stiffness. The stiffer your arrow is while maintaining good flight, the better performance you'll get for penetration on target. After that, it would probably come down to an arrow in the weight range of 500 grains. I selected 500 because it's a good middle of the ground on the weight comparison, but still gives you enough mass where you can select strong components that won't fail. We're talking about strong broadheads, strong inserts, a durable arrow shaft. All of those things become very important. And shooting something in the 500 grain category allows you to easily do this. Now, from some of the videos, if you go back and watch, this is actually independent of bow poundage. This weight I would recommend for just about anybody, whether you're a lower poundage, lower draw, shorter draw, or a higher poundage, higher draw, I think you'll get a very well performing arrow out of this. That's a good compromise between our flight overall path of the arrow that can be traveled, as well as the penetration potential that's needed for that shaft. From there, I'd really look at when we are adding weight to our shaft, prioritize that weight towards the front of the shaft rather than the tail end. Always keeping in mind that our arrow flight is critical. From here, we're gonna consider broadheads. Now, from the tests that I've run so far, specifically cut on contact. And when I say cut on contact, I mean a cutting edge blade first something that can be resharpened or at the very least replaced or maintained. That initial point that contacts the target is the most important portion of the broadhead. If it doesn't do its job, the rest of the broadhead can't either. I have no problem with whatever broadhead you want to shoot, mechanical, etc. But make sure that the first portion of the broadhead to touch the animal is a very sharp point tip in some way, preferably one that can be maintained because it will, as all steel does, degrade due to exposure to air. Keep that in mind for the broadhead you select. Some of the testing we've got coming up will be fletchings. I've got a lot planned for the wind tunnel. I just haven't had the time to do it yet, and I do apologize for that. But we've got a lot of that coming up. Throughout this video, you'll probably have seen a lot of tables and numbers and graphs, and I hope that's been useful to everyone. If there's any questions or comments, concerns, you have for me, please reach out. I'd love to hear them. Till next time, I appreciate everyone following along. And if you have any questions, like I said, let me know.